like I cannot wear them this way. Ah, good old jeans that someone left you as a heritage. Not someone but your brother. One beautiful day, you start cleaning your house, throwing the old unnecessary things away, and finally you see one pair or two pairs or three pairs of jeans that are left for no reason. They are looking so poor that you don't even want to throw them away. And one beautiful day, you wake up with idea to make birthday dress. Can you guess the dance I've tried to imitate here? I loved the backside of them, but simply on the streets, your clothes are to be seen both sides. We are here to reborn these trousers. And I forbid you ever again to throw your denims. They have something dirty. For this tutorial, I have drawn the short straw. And what I mean by that is that the three pairs of jeans I've had to make it, they were different colors. And if they're different colors, it's really hard to make a match between them. But you will see later how I tricked them. Because in sewing, we are tricking the fabric to work for us. If you have decent looking jeans, not with holes and dirt on them, two pairs will be enough for you, but I've had three pairs and I don't know if they're going to be enough. Old jacket belt for the breasts, straps to hold the dress, and pieces that are pleated with the jeans i've had in store i was capable of making short three-layered dress but you can make it how you want it when you have enough fabric of course in my case i'm using the most out of the game fabrics I try to cut them in straight line as long as it's possible and I try to be as close as possible as the seam. In my case I'm using the back part of the trousers and the two little front parts that were hanging on the front. I am really glad that I don't drink alcohol because straight lines are not going to be possible. Please, 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 I want you to look at my scissors. They are my least favorite because if I have to work with them for two hours, my hands will hurt on the next day. Actually, these are my little niece's scissors. She works with them with her tiny hands and we together create gorgeous masterpieces. But it's a problem when I cannot find my big scissors and have to work with these tiny, tiny, tiny little scissors. Ah, my favorite sound. The sound of the ripped fabric is my favorite. When I hear it, I just know that I will save hundreds of hours on cutting. And so these are the leftovers. I will use them for some other project. You don't have to worry about the sizes of your pieces. They could be not so even, it will not be a problem at all. But if you are a neat picky person, make the pieces exactly the same sizes. This belt is lower part of customized jacket I have made from the times I made customized denim clothing 
and it is a leftover was the use of throwing these pieces in the garbage when so many workers have worked for the creation of this So make sure the belt you find or make yourself is the same exact length as your chest area. I take my granny's needle, granny, because it has larger ear for thick threads to go through. From end to end, this should be sewn and gathered. For starting point I decided to sew it like our grannies did, but maybe later I will change that thing. Sew it few times just to finish it. Open the belt as sandwich and just tuck it in. After that I grab my magic pins and connect the whole piece to the belt and voila. You can watch the video in the description down below to see how to sew these strap holders. What happens when you don't put your straps here? You come these strap holders. Adjusting the straps is a science for me. I can do this for eternity. Okay, so it's really impossible to match the colors of all the denims and simply this really doesn't look any good. I just decided to flip it. I'm just going to use the back parts of these denim pieces to make some kind of matching colors. Loosen this thing because you want your lower thread to be loose to make the gathering. I can't believe I have to rub my eyes to see if it's actually happening that I'm working so fast. The ends of the thread should be left without backstitch. Get the one thread in your hand and pull it in order to gather the fabric. It's important this thread to be stronger. Pull the fabric to make even pleats. Or if they are not even, make them to be near even. This is what happens when I don't listen to my own advices. I have told you to make it with stronger thread, but who listens the wise man with the white hair? I have plucked one for you to see that I am a wise man. Every man with white hair is considered to be wiser. I just make sure to do the gathering again. Pull the thread and then little by little the fabric. You have to tie the ends only when you have finished with the gathering. At the free borders I make seam for the materials to not fringe. Today I decided to play for you. Male. Some of the concerts I listen during work. The ends that are left open should overlap each other. After all, this is a birthday celebration. Not that somebody's have a birthday, but simply we're celebrating life every day and every hour.
I follow the path of the created seam because that way I will avoid making mistakes. I should make the lower part but I'm too lazy and I'm not going to show you the same exact thing all over again. The real magic starts here. I pin both fabrics but only on some places where the upper part makes split there shouldn't be a pin. Here I'm leaving it open. The operation is the same even when the ends are open too. Make the pleat and pin both parts. I call these pleats artificial because they are made unnaturally. If you have noticed that giant hole I carefully hit under the upper part. Don't forget that we are making birthday dress. It should be spectacular, not with some gross holes on it. I have started reiterating the process again. No, no, no. I don't have any nerves of doing the same exact thing all over again. We see another hole here. It looks like little mods have had their little feast. We have holes on many places, so I'm just going to cover them with some crystals. Although I've said that I'm not going to reiterate the process, you are my loving people, my team. So I decided to show you the pinning part again. I'm taking the dress to assemble everything together. The sewing should be made where my pins are pinned. Fixing the fabric underneath to go in straight line is really important. On some places I directly overlap the separated fabrics and connect everything together. I sew and backstitch the part that is between the two pleats. I move backwards the pleat or you can call it fold to not stand in my way and next I sew next to it. I stop here and backstitch and skip the other pleat and do the same as well. Sewing, backstitch, moving the pleat from my way and reiterating the same exact process all over again. Like this is really time consuming because there are so many pleats created here and you have to be patient for you to make this done. This segment is showing the process in the best possible way. One secret tip here, I help my hands to feel underneath where the gatherings are created with my fingers. And deep and low. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm opening my most luxurious box. The box with my jewelry. There I store my gemstones. In cases like this, the mods have eaten too much. I just put a gemstone and erase what happened with these little, little flying creatures. We're making beautiful look and what's beautiful if we don't have any gemstones, if we don't make it shinier, if we don't make it spectacular. And now the revealing of the final piece. Spectacular! Today I have invited, not I have invited, they have invited me 
she invited me. No, I don't know who invited who. This is my beautiful queen, Alexandra. The makeup artist that I have had worked with today, she made her like a Russian doll. 